Okay, good morning. Um, let me, okay, this is the title of my talk, uh, lecture my data for circulation of personal data. And personal data is quite important among uh, many different kinds of data. And I'm, I'm gonna explain why it is so. And uh, let, let me first, uh, let us first look at uh, the summary or the outline of this lecture. We, I'm going, going to discuss uh, several, uh, a few points. One is uh, my data. What is my data? Uh, is my data means, okay, that, that's the second slide. <laughs> my data means uh, that data subjects, uh, in the case of prison data, data subjects are individuals, us. We are involved in uh, the utilization of personal data, our own data. That, that is what my data means. And, and this is my data, in that sense, is necessary for improvement of personal services, like uh, medical service, education, and uh, elderly care, mobility, and uh, you know, uh, retail service, and so on and so forth. And personal, so, and personal service account for uh, uh, most of social value. In fact, <laughs> they, as a whole, account for more than GDP, a gross domestic product. And also, uh, my data is necessary for real operation and development of artificial intelligence technologies. And my data uh, is spreading, uh, not just in uh, Japan, but also worldwide. I'm gonna explain uh, these points afterwards. So that's the first one. The second point is decentralized management of personal data is vitally, vitally necessary for technical scalability and social receptivity of uh, services based upon personal data. And third one is only PLR, which is a kind of uh, uh, IT tool uh, that, that I've been developing. PLR uh, meets all requirements uh, including decentralized control uh, for data management. And uh, the last two points are quite important. Purchase support uh, is uh, support for you know, individual people to, to do shopping uh, is the most profitable uh, service utilizing personal data. Profitable means that the market scale, market size of this service is larger than 10% of GDP. So therefore, matching uh, between individual needs and you know, uh, personal services is the most important application of AI, <coughs> most profitable use case of AI. And finally, profit sharing of purchase support uh, incentivizes or uh, induces companies, organizations towards production and portability of high quality data, which you know, uh, increases the entire value of the society. So this is the outline that I'm going to uh, talk about each of these. <clears throat> okay, my data means data subjects, individuals involvement in personal data utilization. And it is vital for better personal services due to several reasons. One is that the individual's consent is necessary in most cases uh, to use personal data. And second, uh, data management must be decentralized to individual services, individual, individual uh, sites of location of services, uh, rather than being uh, controlled by some, some particular person uh, at some particular point, at some, some particular location. So, so it, it is impossible to exercise centralized control over all the different personal services uh, taking places in you know, many different uh, uh, sites in the country and around the world. So the management must be decentralized. And third point is service values, uh, basically values to service recipients, uh, individuals who, who are receiving services, not uh, the value to the service providers, basically, right? So uh, clients of services, users of services pay money pay prices according to the values they receive, they enjoy. So uh, the service values are values to service recipients. So uh, 
if those recipients, individuals, can control uh, how to use the personal data uh, of the, their own personal data, then uh, it would uh, easily improve the quality, the value of uh, personal services. So my data is vital for better personal services. And how big, how large is personal uh, services value? So personal services account for, well, in our, of course, this, is, uh, this depends upon from, uh, you know, uh, countries. Uh, it differs from countries to another. But uh, well, generally speaking, uh, personal services account for 120% of GDP. In, in Japan, it, it may be a, a little more than uh, 100 Ten percent, but in uh, places like the states, uh, that would be more than one hundred twenty percent of GDP. So th this is the uh, uh, contents of this one hundred twenty percent. B two C services, that's you know uh, household consumption. That's, that's the services to uh, consumer individuals account for uh, well, more than half of GDP, typically 60% of GDP in many countries. And in the States, for instance, it is uh, 70 or 80%. So this, this much is, is uh, you know, in included in GDP, but the, 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 the other two are not uh, in GDP. The second one, services to workers. So we, we, are, we individuals are not the consumers, but also you know, workers, producers, and we as producers also receive uh, services, and that is not included in GDP, but it would be uh, some, somewhere like 30% uh, of GDP. And finally, there are many free of charge C2C services like uh, household works and, uh, you know, raising babies and children and, uh, you know, uh, collaboration with uh, uh, neighboring people. And this would also account for 30% of GDP if uh, you know, evaluated in terms of uh, you know, uh, money. So in total, that would uh, add up to 120% uh, of GDP. Right, so it's a huge value. And also, data circulation is necessary for AI, of course. But the AI needs rich data for both primary use, that is in actual operation, and also secondary use in development or machine learning and so on. And the actual operation that is primary use is the purpose. That, that's the main thing. And the, without that, AI uh, doesn't mean anything. While development, that secondary use, is a means to support this uh, primary use. So if individual's uh, personal data is available for primary use, that, that's, that, that holds due to uh, my data, then anonymized big data is available for secondary use based upon uh, data subject's consent. And what is necessary here is BPL, which stands for Business Process uh, Reengineering, for the sake of uh, circulating rich uh, personal data in uh, the whole society, which consists of uh, several uh, different points. One is creation and sharing of rich, rich means abundant, and detailed, and structured uh, data in every aspect of daily living work. And second is service coordination by standard ontology. So, so different services must uh, be able to share uh, their data. So if one service outputs some data, then that data must be uh, input to another data. In order for that to be possible, uh, the data format must be standardized, right? So that's part of BPR. And third one is data circulation by uh, data subjects' uh, will or consent. And this thing, BPR, cannot be done by AI. It's contrary. AI needs BPR. So AI cannot, the current AI doesn't understand meaning. But in order to do BPR, you, you need to understand meaning. So uh, only humans can carry out BPR. And that's the foundation of AI, not vice versa. All right, so in order for this uh, data circulation, there, there are many 
you know, uh, institutional trends in the world. So, so most uh, uh, important is GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, which was in force in uh, 25th of May last year. So this law, this rule, has been devised in order for the sake of protection of uh, human rights about uh, personal data. And this, applies, this law applies to uh, EEA stands for European Economic Area, which consists of EU. EU uh, consists of about 28 countries, plus three. Uh, three countries are these green ones, uh, uh, Norway, Iceland, and also invisible Liechtenstein between Switzerland and uh, Austria. So, so 30, 31 countries, 31 EEA countries, uh, uh, the object of this uh, new law. And this law applies to, uh, of course, European and EEA companies, but also to uh, any uh, other uh, countries' uh, companies. So, so Japanese companies and American companies must obey, must be compliant with this law. So uh, they, they must, uh, you know, yeah, you know, so law, law is enforced uh, worldwide, not just in uh, EEA area. And although uh, Britain, UK is going to, may, may be quitting EU, but the, it has, UK, they have a very similar law to uh, this GDPR, so, so UK may be uh, seen as under the control of GDPR. And there are several articles, uh, typical ones like Article 17 uh, to 19, which uh, uh, declares the right to uh, correction, erasure, restriction, which means that individuals can uh, require uh, companies who, who own their uh, personal data to correct or erase or restrict the use of their personal data. So that that human right has been established by GDPR. But more important is Article 20, which uh, declares right to data portability. Data portability means that data subjects, subjects can um, use their own data freely according to their own will. So if uh, this person's uh, personal data is controlled by this company, for instance, uh, they must uh, disclose or provide the digital data to the data subjects themselves. And he or she can provide the data uh, based upon her own will to any other parties, like any, any other uh, service provider, in order to enjoy better services by using her own data. So that's data portability. And well, that's you know uh, mainly the story in uh, Europe and uh, countries like uh, Brazil and uh, Singapore, and uh, many followers are going to uh, are basically adopting the same similar kind of uh, regulation. But also China uh, is doing quite similar thing. Uh, China is uh, enforcing very totalitarian policy about policies about data. For, so, for instance, if you look at cybersecurity law, uh, network censorship, and data localization. Data localization means that uh, personal data or some some other particular kind of data cannot be, uh, you know, uh, brought out of China. They they must be confined in uh, Chinese territory. And also nationwide payment platform uh, and the cryptocurrency uh, by the uh, People's Bank of China, which is similar to uh, Japan Bank in the case of Central Bank uh, in, in other countries. And, and this means that government, that's uh, the People's Bank of China, knows all domestic cash flow, uh, digital cash flow uh, in the country. So. Uh, Alipay and WeChat Pay and all, all these, uh, you know, digital transactions uh, between uh, banks uh, are known to uh, the People's Bank of China, which is part of the Chinese government. So these are very totalitarian policies. But on the other hand, 
they have enforced something quite similar to GDPR last year, uh, the 1st of May uh, 2018. And this is very similar to G, uh, GDPR, and in particular, data portability uh, is declared in this. Uh, uh, this is not law, by the way. This is technical standard, but uh, they, they say that this has a similar power as law. So, uh, so, so it's, it uh, declares, uh, defines data portability rights in order to promote data utilization in the market, private market. And the Chinese government uh, is maybe trying to, you know, um, let the market to develop uh, businesses uh, in uh, EU-like environment, and the developed businesses will be exported to any other parts of the world. So that's what China is doing. So basically, this idea, general data protection regulation, in particular, uh, data portability is spreading in the world. So what's happening in Japan? There are many aspects, uh, kinds of data, which are going to be portable uh, in the near future. So for instance, healthcare system reform is happening um, and will be completed in 2025. If this is done, then healthcare will be portable. And also from last year, cashless movement has been spreading. And if you know, uh, payment is digitized, digitalized, and purchase data, it would be also digitized, digitalized, and uh, receipts would be electronic and, uh, you know, come to, uh, you know, shopping individuals as well. And e-portfolio is going to be deployed in university entrance examinations from uh, next fiscal year, which is a learning or education data portal really would, would be promoted by this uh, uh, reform as I will be uh, discussing later more in detail. And from last year, several uh, banks and uh, several big companies have declared that the personal, they, they are going to do personal data banks from this year, and uh, some are doing some you know, experiments already. And personal data banks are businesses which cannot be, cannot you know, uh, scale up without data portability. So those big players are, you know, must promote data portability as well. And they, the government is discussing second revision of personal information protection law, which will be completed in uh, next year and uh, uh, will be in force in 2021, two years later. And in this second revision, maybe some kind of general data portability would be introduced or clarified in Japanese law as well. Or, or in any, any case, Japanese law would, would be better comply with GDPR as a global standard. So Japan is moving towards the same direction as GDPR. Um, well, uh, let's skip this because it takes time to explain. So purchase data portability is progressing. Uh, if you go to, well, I don't know whether Yaoko supermarkets are around Nagoya area, but if you go to go shopping to Yaoko, then they would uh, give you a plastic card. And if you register the card number in, on the web, then you can look at your uh, digitized receipt after you uh, buy anything at the Yaoko supermarket. And also Lawson's smartphone payment and uh, uh, cultural convenience clubs, cut the new services. They, they are similar to uh, digital receipts. So, so uh, purchase data are gradually gathering to uh, the purchaser individuals. Uh, this is uh, university entrance examination system reform from fiscal year, uh, next fiscal year, two, 2020. This introduces uh, e-portfolio, which is the uh, electronic learning record or study log. And uh, if th this is uh, enforced from next fiscal year, but uh, uh, 
、文科省、uh, Ministry of Education,、hmm? Education, Sports, Education, Culture, Sports, and whatever, Science and Technology,、um, has a vision that everybody will manage her study log, including e portfolio, from primary schools through Junior high, high school, and university, and after graduating university and uh, uh, after uh, employment, all, all through uh, the life, everybody will manage her study log uh, to, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, lifelong learning and career development. And in order for that to be possible,、uh, this data must be portable. This, this may, data must be under control. Of the learner、uh, herself or himself. So, learning and education data will be portable in the near future as well. So, when data, personal data, is gathered to the data subjects themselves,、uh, they need, we need some tool to you know, manage and utilize、uh, those kinds of data. And that is PDS, Personal Data Store, which allows each individual to accumulate her own data and to utilize the data by sharing the data with other parties. And if you look at this uh, uh, science fiction、um, novel almost、uh, 50 years ago by、uh, Hoshi Shinichi, you would find the information bank uh, discuss, uh, talked about in this, appearing in this、uh, storyline. I recommend to read this. They provide this from、uh, Kindle and、uh, paper form as well. Okay, including、um, PDS, there are many、uh, different data management methods. And most of the case,、uh, for the sake of data sharing, you use some shared storage. And,、uh, This supports data sharing among the different users, like、uh, companies and individuals. And data management methods、uh, can be、uh, you know, categorized into three、uh, classes. One is、uh, either using dedicated shared storage or ID federation technology. And this is the most common IT system. So, so most IT systems around, which really exist,、um, Belong to this category. So,、uh, this method uses dedicated shared storage. So, so、uh, this shared storage is dedicated for the particular service, like、uh, any kind of system.、Um, so, learning management system and、uh, school management system, and so on and so forth. So, all, all, almost all the systems are like that. And the question is, Whether、uh, these different methods、um, meet all these different functionalities, different requirements for the sake of data management. So, the requirements are、uh, so the operation and interaction must be inexpensive, and、uh, data storage is necessary, data sharing must be supported, and rights definition must be you know, secure. That, that is, Uh, rights is the data access rights. So, who can access and which part of data and、uh, how, how, how they can use the data. So, that, that kind of rights must be properly defined and、uh, you know, maintained and、uh, managed to, to uh, you know, uh, prevent、uh, falsification and so on. So, that's、uh, data definition. And security is So called security, that's the confidentiality,、uh, integrity, and,、uh, and the availability at a、uh, normal term. And traceability is that you can trace、uh, the usage of your own data, who used which part of the data for what purposes and how, can be traced by you yourself. That's traceability. So, Uh, data management methods are required to meet、uh, these conditions, but most systems, most、uh, systems which belong to this category, which, which means actually most systems, do not meet、uh, you know, most of these requirements. 
Okay, it is expensive to introduce dedicated server and also operation is costly. And uh, okay, data storage and sharing would be fine, but uh, uh, rights definition can be falsified by the system administrator because system administrator has, well, has a, is almighty and he, he can do anything against uh, the contract against the law. So, so in fact, system administrator's uh, function uh, has been, you know, uh, misused and a uh, huge amount of data uh, leaks from time to time. Uh, so if you, if you uh, remember last year's event, uh, Marriott Hotels has leaked uh, six, no, no, five hundred uh, millions uh, customers' data, for instance. That's a huge amount of data. And similar incidents are happening quite often. So security is not uh, guaranteed, and the traceability is not guaranteed either because, you know, uh, access rights definition can be falsified. And this, this is the best uh, data management method. Uh, which uses uh, public shared storage. So, so this storage is not dedicated to uh, the service at all. Plus DR, DRM, which means digital rights management. DRM is um, to um, restrict the functionality of the means to access encrypted data. So you, your data is uh, stored in an encrypted form, and uh, some uh, no, limited kind of application can access the data, but the functionalities of these methods, the functionalities of these applications are limited as well. That's DRM. So, so if you consider uh, ebook you purchase from uh, Kindle, uh, the data of ebook is downloaded. To, to your smartphone or to, to your PC. And so data is, you know, uh, beside you. And you can read the book and search uh, the book for, for some word or something. So that sort of utilization usage is supported by the system, but you cannot extract the ebook data to, to produce some PDF file and uh, give the file to anybody else. That's impossible, right? So um, DRM allows some kind of usage to the user, but disallows some other, uh, other kinds of usage in order to uh, you know, guarantee uh, privacy and, uh, and the security and so on and so forth. So, so this uh, method, this, ca this category uh, methods meets all these requirements for data management. And the remaining category which uses no shared storage is limited in terms of functionality because th there is no storage in between. The, uh, the individual's application must uh, hit the API of the, the business, business operator. That's the only way to uh, you know, exchange data. So sharing, among, uh, sharing data among individuals and uh, sharing large data are difficult in, in this category. Therefore, this is the best way to manage your own data. If you look at, uh, okay, th this is centralized data sharing. So, th so this guy is a system administrator and uh, administers the uh, data sharing system. And uh, it is very costly to introduce a system also, uh, you know, uh, run and operate uh, the system as well. And what's worse is that he may, by mistake, leak all the data he can uh, you know, lay hands on. Uh, so, so all the data shared here may be leaked at one time because there is some functionality which is un under his control. Um, and the, by using that functionality, he can access all the data. If, so, so he uh, makes some mistake, all the data may leak. Also, if somebody, some, some bad guy, 
uh, you know, uh, steals that functionality then as uh, similarly all the data may leak. And that sort of incidents are happening quite often. And that's the drawback of centralized data sharing. And this is uh, PLR, the best way, uh, personal life repository. Okay, um, so PLR uses uh, non-dedicated public uh, data storage, online storage, like uh, Google Drive and OneDrive. And, and P -P PLR is, is this uh, middleware, which is attached to corporate application and personal application as well, and communicates uh, data with PLR Cloud so that you know, users of PLR can share data with each other. Plus, PLR uses uh, DRM, as I said, digital rights management. So uh, PLR encrypts the data before storing the data uh, locally or in the cloud as well. And uh, the usage of the data is limited by limiting the functionalities of the applications to access the data. And also, other merit of this system is that this part comes for free, right? Each user subscribes, subscribes some part of uh, Google Drive and OneDrive and so on. But uh, it is not the cost of the service provider based upon uh, PLR. It, it's up to individual users. And uh, most of the case, uh, they, they use uh, Google Drive and OneDrive for free. Uh, so this system is very uh, you know, inexpensive. And uh, even if there are billions of users, this whole service can be maintained by uh, just the cost for you know, application maintenance. And le let me talk about uh, DRM-based uh, data minim minimization a little more. Data minimization means data usage is limited to prior agreement consensus. And this can be implemented by DRM. Uh, in such a way that only necessary uh, processing is technically possible for both individuals and organizations. So for instance, uh, if y you, you are handling uh, your data by PLR, and even you yourself cannot store or send uh, decrypted plain text data, right? So there is no functionality for you to do this uh, in, in your application. So it never happens that you leak your own data by mistake. So mistake never, occur, never uh, you know, induces data leakage at all. Very safe. On the other hand, for uh, organize, uh, organizations or business operators, they, their systems can be configured in such a way that they can statistically analyze mass personal data but they cannot store or send a decrypted plain text data or analyze specific persons or, you know, uh, so uh, if, if this um, condition holds, then people would be, you know, more, uh, feel more safe, more, feel safer when providing the, the data to you know, uh, this company. All right, so that's data minimization. And this is a personal application based upon PLR, which runs on multiple platforms, including Android, iOS, Java, and web. And free distribution has been uh, commenced, uh, at least for Android and iOS. And uh, this app supports basic PLR functionalities, including authentication, encryption, decryption, and communication with the cloud. And this allows you to uh, share data with others, uh, including management of friends and groups and uh, consent. And also this um, app allows you some data composition and utilization, uh, like, like a live log and a questionnaire and so on. And this app is quite easy to customize by, you know, you know uh, composing your own ontology, that is data schema, 
and uh, deploying the schema into the app, which is quite simple. So uh, one data schema would uh, make this app to, to some you know, particular, uh, some purpose-oriented um, app, like, a, like a, uh, you know, purchase record system or mater maternity uh, record system and so on. And you, you can download and use those apps. Uh, so the Android application is available, uh, you know, ordinarily from uh, Google Play Store. If you uh, start up Play Store and uh, uh, inquire personally, then you would be able to download and install the, uh, install the app. And if you like, you, you may, you know, uh, make friends with uh, this account, which is under my control. And uh, so I, w I would uh, uh, recommend you to uh, try this app and uh, evaluate the app. And uh, I would be happy to, to have comments from you. And this technology has been used in uh, several different uh, sites for the sake of, uh, in, this, in this particular site, for the sake of healthcare. So we have been collaborating with uh, several different regions in Japan. And uh, those regions have, uh, you know, installed and uh, uh, some, some system for sharing data among uh, regional uh, healthcare organizations. And uh, we, we have been collaborating with these uh, regions and uh, those, you know, data sharing system has been, has been coordinated with PLO so that, uh, you know, regional inhabitants can share their data with uh, you know, regional hospitals and uh, clinics and uh, elderly care system, uh, facilities and so on. Okay, this is about the business model. But, uh, well, well, time is up. Let me be quick. Um, usages of personal data can be categorized into three. One is matching between your personal needs against personal services. And uh, this is so-called primary use of data for the sake of personal services themselves, which is, as I said, larger than GDP. And this is analytics. So, so the, the, those companies collect data from many people and they analyze the data or do, do machine learning and so on and so forth. And as I said, uh, this is larger than GDP and purchase support about these personal services would count for more than 10% of GDP. So if this company, uh, Mediata, provides some application to each uh, customer, and the customer can, can use the, this application to um, match her own needs with personal services, and also purchase the service, then uh, the business this Mediata is doing is purchase support, which whose whose commission would be more than 10% of this uh, terminal price, which is more than 10% of GDP. Okay, uh, due to time limitation, let's skip uh, the rest of the story and uh, let's review this again. Uh, I have talked about med, uh, my data, which is necessary for improvement personal services, and personal services account for uh, more than GDP. And decentralized management of personal data is, uh, you know, vital for the sake of a scalab scalability of service and the social receptivity uh, of services as well. And only PLR meets all uh, requirements for the sake of uh, data management. And purchase support is the most profitable uh, service utilizing personal data, which accounts for more than 10% of GDP. Therefore, matching is the most important application of AI. And I, I didn't talk about this thing. Okay, <laughs> thanks all for your listening. But uh, well, time has been uh, run out. And uh, if you have any question, I would be uh, happy to accept that. Am I supposed to you know, uh, ask you to do, do some homework, like uh, reports? なんかレポートの課題出したりするんでしたっけ？あ、なるほど。はい。あ、わかりました。はい。Okay, please uh, compose some 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 of your thoughts uh, in response to this lecture and submit a report. 
afterwards. Sorry for breaking the time limitation, but uh, if you have any question, then I'd be happy to discuss. Are you okay? All right, thank you very much.